the NBA Finals, the biggest basketball stage where legacies, memories, and legendary status will elevate superstar players across every generation, the league will see some of the very best players all time, like Michael Jordan, exemplifies what it's like to be as perfect as an all-time great out to be in the championship games. Undefeated in six finals, when you make multiple trips to the championship games, almost unheard of for any superstar, while many guys who came up just short of a championship were the series ended up in a close seven, pivotal moments happen instantaneously, making costly plays might forever haunt the player and franchise. How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. Let's take a look at 10 of the biggest NBA Finals mistakes ever made that potentially cost the team a championship. Starting from the beginning of time, 1955, Syracuse Nationals and Fort Wayne Pistons, lots of conspiracy theories involving gamblers, alleged some Fort Wayne players drew away the series. There's a little footage for everyone to make their own judgment. The seventh game, score tied at 91, Fort Wayne possession, George Yardley, a palming violation. Then Pistons' Frankie Bryan decided to foul Syracuse's George King. By near half court, wasn't even close to the basket. 12 seconds left, King hit the one free throw shot, Nationals the lead. Then Hall of Fame point guard Andy Phillips, following possession, carelessly lost the ball with 3 seconds left, an absolute travesty for the Pistons. George Yardley accused teammate Phillips of throwing away the series. Fort Wayne led 41-24 early second quarter. Suspicious nature of Game 7 allowed the Nats to come back and rally. Other Pistons were strongly believed to have drawn games, while former Fort Wayne player Jack Molinas from the previous season banned from the NBA for betting games. Perhaps he still had connections to his former teammates and involved some way. A dark moment in finals history, perhaps none of us will ever fully know. 1969 Finals, Will Chamberlain vs. Head Coach Butch Van Berdakoff, a decisive Game 7 at home, the greatest big three ever assembled at the time, Will, Jerry West and Elgin Baylor seemed like guaranteed locks for a ring. Boston dominated LA, had a 17-point fourth quarter lead. Lead. Lakers narrowed the deficit to 103 96, 519 to go. Chamberlain wincing in pain after the rebound, put some ice on it, asked to get subbed out. Then, when asked to come back, coach said, Forget it, we don't need you. LA got within 103 102, missed chances by Wes and Erickson. Then, 77 seconds left, Don Nelson's iconic bounce off the back rim kind of sealed the deal. Wilt said coach told him to sit down and shut up. At the time, Chamberlain 18 points, 27 rebounds in 43 minutes. His feel with coach lasted throughout the season, came back to bite the team who was heavily favored to win it. Not only did Van Berdikoff not want Wilt back in the game, wanted to prove that he could win without him, telling the most dominant force the game has ever seen to sit down. When the knee quieted down a little bit, Dipper said to me, tell the man I'm ready to go back in. And then Brennikoff said, tell him the hell with him. We don't need him. If I remember correctly the words I said, and I've been set up off enough, so we're playing better without you. In fact, the team Wilt Wilt narrowed the deficit by 10. Russell and Havlicek drew their fifth foul, Sam Jones fouled out on plays involving the Big Dipper. With Will on the bench, LA couldn't foul out anyone, the dumbest coaching decision in finals history. Owner Jack Ken Coke furious and fired Van Berdikoff right after the series, last time he coached an NBA team in a postseason game. 1977 NBA Finals, the favorite Philadelphia 76ers versus the young Portland Trailblazers, first two game at home, Philly the easy wins looked like it was going to be a sweep, till late game 2, Sixers Daryl Dawkins and Blazers Maurice Lucas squared up middle of the court in the NBA Finals, two sucker punches drawn before the play started, after Dawkins body slammed Blazers Bob Gross, who was about 60 pounds lighter than Big Daryl actually hit his own teammates Doug Collins, who needed 4 stitches, game was already decided, but the Sixers self-destruct, the turning point of the series, if Dawkins wouldn't have swung and accidentally hit his teammate, the whole team wouldn't have lost focus, Dawkins was furious in the locker room after, lost control, Philly started to collapse, did not win another game, Dr. J had his head down, everybody on Philly upset, something for Portland to get excited about, decisive wins for the Blazers, the internal locker room for the Sixers. 
completely in shock. Portland's energy led by superstar Bill Walton, an improbable comeback remembered as Blazer Mania. If it wasn't for the fight, this Sixers team would have felt way better being up 2-0 without anybody getting hurt. 1984 Lakers Celtics, Magic Johnson turning into Tragic Johnson, his lowest career moment after a 1-0 Lakers series lead, multiple Showtime stars choked. First, James Worthy, up 113-111, threw the ball right into the hands of General Henderson for the lay-in to tie it. Johnson, a chance to win it in regulation, dribbled out the clock, had plenty of time to make a play, but literally froze up. Scott Wedman then drained the winning dagger over Magic in OT after prevailing Game 3. The fourth game, Lakers up two games to one. Johnson, in regulation, wasted a lot of time doing absolutely nothing. Parrish stole his pass uncharacteristic by Magic. In overtime, Johnson missed not one, but two free throws with a chance for the lead. Then the following possession, Larry Bird drained the jumper over Johnson. Worthy had a chance to tie, but went one of two from the line. Lakers down three. Worthy's inbounds pass stolen by ML Carr on the breakaway slam. Boston even the series. In a decisive game seven, the last two minutes, Johnson had two turnovers when his team was only down three, came up short in the most anticipated finals game the league has seen. Although Magic was already a two-time champ and twice a finals MVP, the intensity and physicality of the Celtics likely caught him off guard. He did bounce back strongly the following year. Some were so shocked at Magic's ugly display, many thought he was purposely drawing away these games like he had money on the Celtics. 1998 NBA Finals Game 6, The Last Dance. Big mistakes by the refs, MJ with the shot to seal it. But if you're not a Jazz fan, you probably don't remember the two bad calls that could have altered the designing factor of the game. A one point grinded out Bulls win, second quarter. Howard Isley of Utah drained a three as the shot clock wind down, but refs waved it off. Dick Bavetta communicating with the scores table, Hugh Hollins, Danny Crawford, the other refs, in front of over 19,000 in attendance, the ball was clearly in the air, could have put his team up 7. The same game, Pippen had a back back, who knew if he was even gonna play game 7. On the 4 to play in the 4th, Ron Harper drained the running jumper and the refs didn't even question if he got it off on time but after shown on the replay, ball was clearly still in his hands. Here's play by play announcer Bob Costas' reaction. In missed calls on shot clock situations, they took a Howard Isley 3 away wrongly in the first half. The game in series sealed Jordan's greatness as the clear cut GOAT, the Jazz franchise still haunted to this very day. The year before didn't necessarily cost the Jazz the title since it was game 6 and they were down 3-2. Tied at 86, Shannon Anderson missed the layup that would have given Utah the lead before he shot it. Scottie Pippen actually touched the rim which should have been an offensive goaltend but Steve Javi explained the ball had no chance to go in so no goaltend. Regardless, a choke job by Anderson, who blew an open layup earlier in the game, led to a Steve Kerr clutch jumper. If the Jazz would have won that game, a good chance they'd probably lose Game 7 in Chicago. But rookie Shannon Anderson point blank, just something to think about. 2005 Larry Brown questionable coaching decisions, Game 5 vs San Antonio, series tied 2-2 in OT, perhaps this game decided to ship, Pistons up 2-2. 9.4 seconds left in OT, the most dangerous guy as many say, the guy taking the ball out of bounds, the red hot unconscious Robert Ory, the last man Detroit should have left open, had 18 points on 4 triples before the shot, Rasheed Wallace decided to double team Manu Ginobili in the corner, left big shot Bob wide open, drained the dagger, gave San Antonio a 3-2 lead, heading home for game 6 and 7, no team down 3-2 ever came back to win game 6 and 7 on the road. Although she messed up, Billups on the Zach Lowe podcast mentioned during the timeout, Pistons were saying no threes allowed. Chauncey saw backup Lindsey Hunter come to the desk when Billups, all defensive second teamer, was on the bench that possession for no apparent reason. Believes head coach Larry Brown choked in that moment. Larry was also negotiating a contract to become the new head coach of the Knicks during the middle of those finals. Rubbed some of his players the wrong way, possibly caused some distractions. The mistakes of Rasheed Wallace and Coach Brown ruined all the hopes of the team repeating and duplicating Chuck Daly and the Bad Boys back-to-back -back success. The last finals game at the Palace, Detroit fans will never forget. 
2006 Game 5, Dallas, Miami, Josh Howard calls timeout. One of the most questionable series, an extremely painful mistake, a bad brain fart. D-Way got fouled at the line, tied the game after the first free throw. Howard shockingly called for time. That was Dallas's last timeout. Avery Johnson in disbelief, that means the Mavs couldn't advance the ball. No idea why Howard would do that. A brutal gut punching decision, drained the second free throw with ease, a Hail Mary for Dallas. Devin Harris way off. The whole Dallas team missed three of his last four free throws down the stretch, including one by Nowitzki. Way shot over 97 foul shots in the six game series, 25 of them coming from game five. 2011, Dwayne Wade and LeBron James mocking Dirk Nowitzki before game five, coughing. Series tied 2 2. Dirk was suffering some flu like symptoms. Too many decisions the Heat could have done better late game 2. Blew a 15 point lead with 5 minutes left. Nowitzki had a fever game 4. Struggled going 6 of 19 shooting, 21 points. But James should have been the last person to mock Nowitzki after scoring just 8 points in game 4. Dirk propelled his team to victory, adding in 10 points in the 4th. After the mocking, Nowitzki went on to have a 29 point game 5, 10 of 10 from the line. James struggled with 17, perhaps Nowitzki attacking the rim, giving his team the lead, followed by a James offensive foul, gave Miami a taste of defeat, momentum shifted towards Dallas heading into game 6, a decisive win, accomplishing one of the most rewarding titles all time. Here was what JJ Berea said about Nowitzki in the JJ Redick podcast and how Dirk really felt. When LeBron and Wade uh, started making fun of him by cuffing when he got a little sick, I don't know if you remember that that clip. Oh, I forgot that happened. Yeah, I remember it now. That clip re really hurt him. That he will never say it, but he really saw the tape, uh, and that that tape really hurt him. And that gave him a little bit extra that he didn't need, but it gave him a little extra to to finish him off. 2013 San Antonio Miami, Pop not subbing in Duncan, game 6 late, for rebounding purposes, came back to bite his team not once but twice. Also, another mistake from Heat fans leaving their arena thinking the series was over, considered the most chaotic finals game, especially down the stretch, wild scenarios from James's two turnovers. A Ginobili and Kawhi miss free throw to the James miss three. No Duncan in the game. Three Spurs trying to fight for the rebound, plus Bosch battling for a loose ball, only to be picked up by Mike Miller, allowing a second chance for LeBron. Heat down three. Duncan once again not in. James miss three, leaving Ginobili battling with the bigger Bosch on the glass, only for Ray Allen to sink the most clutch triple in finals history. The refs also had a questionable play after the Allen shot, stopping the possession before San Antonio can inbound the ball. Referees wanted to fully confirm it was indeed a three. Since San Antonio didn't have any timeouts left, Popovich furious. The play stop meant that Miami was able to set their defense, which led to a Tony Parker air ball, resulted in the devastating San Antonio overtime loss, being the much older team, gassed out the last two minutes of game seven, but San Antonio gladly rebounded the following year. Of course, 2016, Draymond Green trying to low blow LeBron Game 4 2016 Finals, getting extra when the Dubs already were taking a commanding lead. Green falls down, didn't like how LeBron oversteps him, takes a slap. Green was already fortunate to not get suspended after kicking Steven Adams in the groin the previous series, but assessed a flagrant one, automatic suspension for Game 5 due to his flagrant points. If Draymond would have kept his cool, no suspensions, Golden State would have had all the momentum heading into game 5 at home, starting center Andrew Bogut, a series ending knee injury second half of game 5, James and Irving then got to the paint at will, Dubs lineup running Din, combined with the team going for the regular season record, took a toll on them, even resulted in Steph having an MCL sprain, first round series worse Houston, the whole team looked fatigued in the Thunder series, with the combination of Klay Thompson trashing LeBron to the media after game 5 came back to bite his team, making matters worse in game 7, Curry had a reckless behind the back pass out of bounds intended for Klay Thompson, a head scratching mistake, just a dumb play over all, trying to be too fancy down the stretch, a play that's only acceptable in a 20 point regular season blowout. Curry's biggest mistake, if there was any play he can ever take back, you bet this is the one. 
Of course, a few necessary honorable mentions, Dennis Rodman, Game 7 of the 88 Finals, taking a mid-range jumper with 43 ticks left, down 3, wasn't his game, a quick shot, Bad Boys lost by 3, 2012 Game 4, Russell Westbrook fouls Mario Chalmers after the jump ball, didn't need to, with Miami having just 4 ticks to shoot it, OKC only down 3, needed 1 stop, absolutely costly foul, would have still likely lost the game in series regardless, GR Smith 2018 choke, the only chance Cleveland had in stealing a game from Golden State, ruined LeBron's masterpiece. Everyone knew Cleveland was gonna get swept after the JR outcome. John Starks being overly confident, trying to go for the game winning 3 game 6 94 finals. Over defensive player of the year, the greatest shot blocker all time, Hakeem Olajuwon, got a hand on that ball. If Starks would have passed to Ewing, who knows what would have happened. Nick Anderson missing 4 straight free throws in game 1 of the 95 finals, killed Orlando's momentum, the rest of the series could have been way closer than a sweep, Courtney Lee's missed layup 2009 finals, just missed opportunities to tie the series, plus Stan Van Gundy playing Jameer Nelson too early after his injury return, Rafer Austin meshed real well with the Magic team all postseason, Nelson late game 4 also left Derek Fisher open for the dagger bomb, 2 games Orlando losing by inches, CP3 fouling Giannis, Game 5 2021 Finals, caught in no man's land, if he would have let go and gotten away from the possession, Suns would have still been only down 3, but after the foul, Bucks got the offensive rebound, put the game out of reach, those were the biggest finals mistakes ever made, that potentially cost these teams the championship, with a fraction of a second to make these crucial decisions. Let me know which was the biggest mistake on this list, which play was most devastating, Thank you so much for watching this video, subscribe for more content, more good stuff coming soon, I love all of you, see you next time.